with a red sign for record. That means we're recording. The way that this gets sent to you is Google, when all is said and done, sends you an email with a link to the file. And um, then you're able to download that. It, you can drop it in an editing software and you know if you need to cut it up or anything. Um, Cat Meow, you're on. All right, I am Cat Meow. I work at Open Signal doing media education. And right now I'm the community media advocacy manager. Uh, so we're definitely interested in getting these tools and training in the hands of our members and producers and new members. Um, so definitely at Open Signal, also going towards the realm of remote meetings, remote broadcasting, and we're looking at how folks can start utilizing tools like Zoom and Google Hangouts and Google Meets to create some content. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff going on and a lot of creativity. So we're exploring that right now and hopefully we'll be able to bring you some more online training classes on how to be creating content soon. Uh, for now though, um, I'm primarily gonna be talking about Zoom and the interface there. And there's some great new um, ways to protect your privacy and stop uh, Zoom bombers, which we'll talk about a little bit later from interfering with your, with your meetings and your events. I'm glad everyone's here and I recognize some of you. Hi, folks. Oh, also, if you hear some chirping noises, I have three birds and sometimes they just, um, they go to town chirping away. So apologize, apologies for that. You don't, you don't need to apologize for your birds. We have hey, a chat. Uh, <laughs> Seth, I was going to ask you, uh, since you mentioned the recording, could you re also mention where it's stored and how to retrieve it and that kind of stuff? Yeah, so the recording, what happens is when you're done recording, you get a link sent to you, like an email link, and it'll go to Google Drive. Um, and it's downloadable from Google Drive. It is kind of funky, like there's permissions around it. So whoever set up the meeting is the person that has access to that file. So you might have to give out permissions afterwards, which J. Lou and I have bumped up against. So um, just so we you know. That. We had that issue at Open Signal too um, recently, and if you're planning on recording, go ahead and tell your admin that you're planning to do that so that they can set it up. Because if they don't, what happens is you end up getting sent the chat, like all the text that's going on in the chat window where we talked about Thai T earlier. That's all going to get sent, but then the link to the file will just give you like a 404 error message. So yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick little run through of the interface of um, Google Hangouts. And just so you guys know, I will probably mute your microphone or have, um, um, looks like Songbird just joined. Songbird, we're, we're recording this. Are you okay with us recording you? I see your mic is muted. If you need to, go down onto the bottom. Um, if you go to the very bottom of your screen, there's a little microphone there. And you can click that. You can also press Command D to mute your microphone. Songbird. Songbird left. OK, cool beans. All right, so um, anyway, I'm going to do a little uh, tour of the interface. I'm going to present my screen. Bottom right-hand corner, um, there's that kind of gray strip across things that has a bunch of options. There's a present now option. It's a little square with an arrow pointing up. And I'm going to present, um, I'm going to select the desktop that I'm working on, which is um, this monitor right here. So um, I'm going to just go kind of left to right and go over a few things. Oh, uh, did we talk about if folks have little quick co comments or questions they can enter or troubleshooting? Yep. Um, thank you for reminding me. So if people need help, put it in the chat. So if you're in this right-hand corner right here, here's your chat. And there's a one right there. So um, looks like there was one message, a hello from Allison. Just if you have questions right there, Cat Meow is going to be my wing lady and help me out. And then I will help her out when we go into the Zoom if you guys have technical problems to resolve. OK, so starting here. Um, this little tab right here tells us our meeting information. So this is something if you need to send this out, you can just copy paste that. There's actually a copy joining info um, uh, option right here. What's nice too is there's this attachments. So if you guys look at your calendar invite, I attached a bunch of stuff to that. Um, 
And we also have, um, we have uh, all this stuff here that you can take a look at. That is dependent on whether or not you've attached it to a Google Calendar invite, which we will get to that down the road here. Like, how do we attach stuff to a Google Calendar and invite? How do we invite people to a Google to a Google Hangouts meet meeting from the calendar? Oh, you want a bigger cursor? Yes. Um, so I'm going to pause. That's a good thing. I'm going to stop presenting and I'm going to show you guys how that's done. So I'm going to go over to a different desktop. Thanks for reminding me of that, Vo. That's something I usually do. So um, if you guys can see this desktop, it's sort of the artsy fartsy design here. Um, I'm going to go up to, and this is something that I use in, app, in an Apple interface. I don't have it for Windows. I'm sure they have comparable things. But if you go to System Preferences, and I'm going to make that show up. If I go back um, into my System Preferences, if you look at this accessibility right here, I click on that and I go to Display Cursor. And I can make my cursor like grande size. So that's what I'm going to do so you guys can see it better. And that's really good if you're presenting something and you're trying to point stuff out. Having this, There's also plugins you can have for Chrome. But this is an easy way to make your stuff super visible. Um, in a while, we're going to get back here and we're going to talk a little, bit, a little bit about permissions. If you're struggling, um, if you're struggling for some reason, like your mic's not working and you're on a Mac, it could be this um, security and privacy. So your, say your camera, um, you need your camera to, to use Zoom or to use Google Hangouts Meet. Well, you actually have to tell, tell um, there are usually a little pop-up will happen and you actually have to tell your system that it's okay for that software to use your camera. Same thing with your microphone. So I have both um, Zoom and um, Google Chrome are allowed to use my microphone. So it's kind of like a new thing. It's like an allowing software to access hardware. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're trying to troubleshoot. This could be one of the places where you need to do that. OK, so I'm going to stop this screen share. So I'm going to say stop presenting. And I'm going to get back to our desktop with Google Hangouts Meet. OK, so getting back to this interface, um, we showed the, the joining inf information and, and attachments. This is your microphone. That's You turn it off. Turn it on. That's how you, and, and general good practice is to turn off your microphone because you get feedback um, if you're not talking. This is how we leave the call. This is how I turn off my camera. There's shortcuts for that. This is Command D. This is Command E. Um, and then we have captions right here. So um, you can turn on captions for the hard of hearing. So if I do that, I'm going to show you my full screen. You guys can see the bottom there. It's um, Google does a pretty good job with voice um, transcription. So I. If, if you have something that's hard of hearing and they need captions, this is a really good way to make that happen. And I can only imagine it getting better, to be honest. Um, so I'm going to turn those off. Uh, this is the pr presentation um, option right here. So I'm presenting my screen. Again, you can present a different desktop if you have multiple monitors. Just make sure you do the right one or you screw up like I just did. And then we have this little ellipsis here for more options. This is my recording option here. We have changed layout. So let's say you don't like the way your layout is. Right now, I think, let's see what I'm on. I'm on auto, but you can do spotlight. And that makes it so just one person's in the middle of the screen, whoever's talking. Um, you can also do tiled and sidebar. I think I prefer sidebar just because it gives me a better sense of who all's here. Um, so that's sort of my preference. Full screen goes full screen. That means all the other stuff that's on my screen goes away. Um, I can go to turn on captions from here. And then let's go to settings. So you'll notice right now my microphone waveform is bouncing right here. 
There's different inputs for your microphone. I'm wearing head um, earbuds right now. This is a really good option, and I would recommend getting some. The kind that have the microphone that are like part of the setup. It makes for a lot better audio. It also makes for a lot less feedback echoing going on. So if you're having a setup where somebody's, you're hearing a lot of echo coming from them, it very well could be that they need to plug in some headphones so you're not hearing that. And then, uh, sorry. We have, um, my speakers right now are my headphones, but you can, you can make it go to other places. But right now I'm, I'm putting it on my headphones. Okay, and then um, you can also use your phone for audio, and then there's all this report a problem stuff. Up here, I think I've mentioned it before, but here's our chat, and this is how we can have people do back and forth. What I'd recommend is something like we're doing right now, where, where you have some other person to support you while you're talking. If you're doing a presentation like this, it's really helpful so that you can just focus on the presentation and that person can help do all the troubleshooting and put out fires. Um, and then also right here, these are the people that are in, are actually in um, the, the Hangouts meets. <laughs> um, and then if you look right here, so I have a phone number here and it anonymizes the phone number, which is nice. Um, strangely, Nanu, that's actually very similar to my phone number. <laughs> my, um, I think that is very close to my phone number. Um, and you can see all the people here. There's this little drop down carrot in this corner. If I look at that, I have the option to pin that video. So let's see here, somebody that's still, uh, let's do Vo, I'm gonna pick on you. If I just wanna show Vo's video, he's rocking out. How's it going, Vo? Uh, <laughs> um, so Vo, Vo's right. right there. Awesome, dude. And let's say, let's say I want, uh, Vo, can you un unmute your microphone again and I'll show the, the great power that you have. So I can unpin that, but I can also mute that right there. And it says mute Vo to everyone in the call. He can unmute himself. I know, it's terrible, it's censorship. Um, so he can, he, can, he can unmute himself, but I can't unmute him. Um, so if I look at these options too, there's some other things I can do. I, I can pin their video, I can mute their microphone, uh, which I can't with Allison because she's already muted, and this is remove. So if you get a troublemaker, you can kick them out, and that's what that minus sign right there refers to. Um, when we're halfway through this seminar, what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch over to a Zoom meeting so we can have the Zoom experience. So what I'm going to do is drop the Zoom meeting link in this chat with the, um, with the password information as well. And when, when that happens, we're all going to collectively leave the Google Hangouts meet. Unfortunately, we always have a few stragglers and that's fine uh, that, that forget to leave. And what I'm gonna do is once you get into that Zoom meeting, I'm gonna press this minus on you and get, get rid of you from the Google Hangouts meet. Okay, so I know that's a lot of information. Are there any questions before we, we move on and talk about inviting people and a little bit about aesthetics? And this is the odd environment of... Uh, uh, Sering, why don't we just unmute your microphone and go ahead. Um, let's see if we can just unmute your microphone. Very bottom of your screen, there's a little microphone, or you can press Command D. If you have a yes, hey, yeah, sorry, I was just talking about internet connection. What what kind of internet connection would I need in order to host or have a yep. stable yep. conversation? That is an excellent question. Um, I didn't actually even plant that question, so I'm going to show you a little something. You need 1.5 megabits per second minimum. That's up and down. And I'm gonna show you a little way that you can test that. So if I go to my second screen, and I go to, and on your second screen, there's actually a little banner. It'll say like your um, meeting is sharing your screen on the bottom here. So there is a website called Ookla. It's a um, speed testing site. 
And what I do is if you want to verify how fast things are going, um, it'll tell you who your provider is. Usually it just picks it up. If you press go, what it's going to do is it's going to give you like this ping. There's some technical thing it does. I don't know. What matters um, right here is this download. Um, so this is megabits per second, and this is your this is your download, and this is your upload. At a minimum, you want 1.5 megabits per second. Most most cable providers, like right now, the Comcast Internet Essentials provides 25 megabits per second. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen here. Um, And um, what I would say is, if you are having trouble, uh, you, you some ways you can clear up bandwidth is like unattach other devices. So if you have like uh, some sort of media thing like an Apple TV or a Roku that connects to the internet and your kids have cell phones and you have your computer on, all that stuff is probably sucking up bandwidth. So if you want to have less of that going on, Disconnect those things so that you can free up more bandwidth. Okay, more questions? That was a really good one. Would you mind sh sharing how you share your screen again for folks? Certainly, certainly. So I'm going to go to the bottom right-hand corner and present my entire screen. Unfortunately, there's elements that I can't actually show because it just won't, it, I either stop or, okay, so so if you guys look at my screen here, bottom right-hand corner, you are presenting. I'm gonna, this is the thing I wanna click. Um, I'm gonna stop, I can stop presenting there, but that's the place to do it. Huh, 500 megabits down, but it's unstable at times. Interesting, I don't know. Uh, yes, the Ethernet is a really good option. If you're having, that's, I mean, I don't have a wired setup right here for my laptop, but a wired connection is the most sort of stable con connection you can have. Okay, so that's how we present. Bottom right-hand corner, you're presenting. Okay, I'm going to say stop presenting. So I'm going to talk a little bit about aesthetics. Um, so one of the things that you'll notice is that I'm fairly well lit right here. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, but it's it doesn't hurt. It it portray it kind of portrays you in a more professional light, like you know what you're doing more. So again, make sure that you have some sort of earphone setup and a microphone. I actually at home I have like you can even buy like. This was a whopping, I think it was free to garage sale. People don't use these all the time, but nowadays they're useful. So these kind of like, you can have a desk type mic like this and many computers have a mic input specifically. Um, but the, head, the headset thing's nice because you get earbuds plus the mic. The other thing is you wanna make sure that you're decently well lit. So here's my, um, light bulb that I have over here um, that's helping with that. And then I'm right in front of a window. You don't wanna be up against a window because you get that, that phenomenon where you're backlit and people can't see your face. Um, so just kind of be careful of that. And then the other thing is be mindful of your headspace. I'm right here and sometimes we see people that are talking you know, from this vantage. And then it's probably better to have less headspace above your head. Okay, just a, a few aesthetic points, but it's it's very helpful. The other thing, and I struggle with this, is make eye contact with the camera, which is sometimes hard because I have multiple monitors or I'm looking at the people on the side here. Um, it's just one of those things like you're, you're sort of like hardwired to look at the people's faces, but the camera is actually where you should be looking. Um, but it's just something you got to practice. I still struggle with it. A good tip is um, to move whichever screen, whichever document you're looking at um, to as close to underneath your camera as possible. And if you're a participant, you can, um, on some of these platforms, change where 
the video is showing so then you can place yourself because we tend to look at ourselves um, right underneath your camera. Word. Okay, um, I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna talk about how to invite people to the meeting. So there's different ways. Um, I'm gonna present now. I'm going to present a different desktop. You can obviously just copy and paste the information. Um, one way, if you just want to do like an instant meeting, there's this join or start meeting. Um, I'm, I have the Google Hangouts meet bookmarked. To access that, let's say I'm, I'm in Google land, I'm in my email, you click here and this is, a meet is one of the, the apps that you can have in your sort of, I don't know the name of the nine dot menu. I was hoping that Vo might know, but I don't know. <laughs> There's a name for it. Anyway, this little grid. What's, that? What's the question? You know the nine dot menu in Google? What is that called? Oh, yeah. I, I can't remember what they call it, but they have it. They gave it a certain name. It's so Okay. Silly. My favorite is the hamburger stack myself. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Uh, anyway, you click on this. You can click on meet, and then it will go to that page. Or right here, it's just meet.google.com. And then I'm going to press join or start a meeting. I can just make up a random meeting. meeting just start it instantaneously. And I can say, uh, I'll say join now. And I can copy that joining info. Or if you want to just add people from right here, you can automatically, it'll just add them to that group. So I am going to log out of this. By the way, present now, since I'm showing it, this is how you pick the desktop. So I have three different screens, and here is where I can pick which de desktop that I want to present. I'm going to stop sharing that. No, I'm going to keep sharing the screen, but I'm going to get out of Hangouts Meet. Boop. Gone. Return to home screen. Um, Dan would like to know what the difference between Google Meets and Google Hangouts is. Good question. OK. so. Um, there is another question, uh, can people join if they don't have an email, a Gmail? Yes, they can. Only the person that's making the meeting has to have a Gmail. Um, so anybody else, and I highly recommend Chrome as your browser can join that way. Um, so, and then what the other question was, um, say that one more time, Katnia. Um, There was a question about the difference between the Google oh, Hangout yeah. and Google Meet. Yes. Okay. So um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to finish the how to invite people via the calendar and that will sort of conclude the Google Hangouts meet. And then I will show you the Google Hangouts interface as well. Um, so the Google meet, this is one way to invite people. I actually think the best way to invite people is I go to my calendar and just set up that. Usually there's some sort of schedule um, scheduled meeting. So I'm gonna click right here. And uh, I'll just say random meeting. This is where I'm gonna add all my guests, super helpful. And then, oops, I already, it already revealed it. Dang it, discard. I want you guys to see this interface so you know. So there's the quick ad, and if you look, I click into this field, that's my location. It actually is the, one of the things that drops down is add conferencing. So if I do that, it just generates my conference. And by the way, this can host up to 250 participants. Um, and live streaming, I believe you can live stream to over 100,000. And I think that, I wanna say that goes on YouTube. I'm not, it just gives you a link that you live stream to. Um, let's see here, I can do this add live stream if I want to. But everything's going to give you a call-in number, like Nanu's calling in. Perfect. Um, and then it's going to give you a link to the address. And then you can add that live stream if you want to. So that's pretty handy. Um, if you go to More Options, it's just going to look like here. It's going to have its own thing. And there's actually, I think there's a way deep in the settings to make it so every time you set one of these up, it generates a meeting link. Anyway, I'm going to get rid of this. That's the, but that's usually how I invite people to um, Google Hangouts Meet. 
Okay, before I move on and discuss Google Hangouts, are there any questions about inviting people or any sort of backlog of stuff we didn't cover? And unmute your microphone if you want to yap. Cat Meow, did we cover most everything that's in the um, question list here? Yeah, I got it. Okay, cool beans. A any more? Just just ping it in the thing and Cat Meow will interrupt me. So, um, I'm so really good at that. She's good. She's a pro. Um, Google Hangouts uh, is sort of like Google Hangouts is where Google Hangouts Meet came from, and I think it used. It's confusing because sometimes it just gets called Google Meet. But I think they realize, like, oh, since we're merging them, we have to have combined names for recognition. So anyway, um, Google Hangouts is very accessible. Um, and it's sort of like the generic grade Google Hangouts meet. If I click in my email, it's usually this is the best way to do it. Um, I just can invite people to um, a Google Hangout. And I'll say, like, cat meow. What will happen? Oh. What will happen is um, if I click on this little um, camera icon, and I'm going to zoom in. Is that when I zoom in? Can you guys see that? Okay, cat meow. Is that looking good? Okay. Yeah, we can see this it. little um, camera icon right here. If I do that, that's going to turn that into a Google Hangout. So it's going to call cat meow. You'll hear like a little tone. And is are you getting that? Oh, you know what? Hold on. Boop. She has to be in her Gmail Boop. to get this. You calling me still? Yeah. Try again. Okay. Hanging up. It's not always the easiest. I'll try one more time. Hmm, I don't know who's the Seth Green character. I better answer. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to mute Cat Meow and the other thing. Okay. So then we have this is Google, the Google Hangouts interface. It's very similar. If I click on here, I can add people to it. I'm going to mute my mic here. Um, I can add people to that. Um, I can dial in my settings right here. Apparently, there's a bandwidth. Um, I can change this to be 720. And 720. Um, I have, I can pick, I can test stuff. I'm going to say done here. And then the ellipsis just allows me to share the screen or go full screen. So as you can see, it's very similar. It's just limited. And I do think Google is supposed to continue support for this, to my knowledge. But um, right now, they have something called Duo that's for phone that's, that's basically the same as FaceTime. I'm not totally clear on the path for this, but if this is all you have, it's totally usable. Uh, you cannot record in this format. Good question, Vo. So to record this, what I would recommend is doing a screen recording, which is more clunky. Um, so what I would recommend is if you do have an industrial you know, enterprise version of Google Hangouts, just do Google Hangouts Meet. I'm going to hang up. See you, Cat Meow. It's been real. Seth, this is Lou. Um, okay. I was I was uh, told that the screen recording on the Mac doesn't record video for privacy issues. I haven't tried it myself, but I'm I was told that when you try to screen record one of these chats huh. on the Mac, it's not it's not going to uh, allow you to record video, only audio. I, I don't think I've had that issue. Um, what what I would use is QuickTime to record. Um, mm -hmm. And and Vo's right. It might actually be something that you need to um, go into privacy settings, like I showed before, and right. and enable QuickTime to do that. So let me yeah, just. Someone bounce. else told me that information. So that was just secondhand. I'm not sure whether they had the privacy uh, info correct or what in their computer. I, you know, in fact, I I'm pretty sure I have done a QuickTime record, and it still showed people's faces. So okay. I think it's probably a privacy issue. And you have to jump in there and dink around with it. Um, that's something else to, to know. One of the things that's nice about Google Hangouts Meet is you can record video, but you cannot record, you can't display audio. What that means, I'm going to stop sharing here for a second. 
what that means is that um, like if I play a movie, like let's say we're reviewing somebody's stuff or I just wanna show you guys a movie, you won't hear, you won't actually hear the audio that's coming from that movie. Um, it does not It does not include internal audio from the computer. So sort of a, a, a workaround for that is to take out your microphone and have your speakers play back and then your microphone will pick that up, but it's kind of crappy sound. So if you do need something more industrial like that, then I would recommend Zoom. The other thing that Google Hangouts Meet does not have is breakout groups or polling right now. I suspect since they are trying to be competitive, I suspect they might add things like that. There's something called Google Jamboard, which is basically like a, um, a classroom uh, whiteboard that you can write on, um, but it's digital. So I could see that in the pipeline, but right now there's no breakout groups. So are it there any? Like Tessering Sherpa has a question about live streaming. Yeah. Is that correct? What you got? Oh, no. I was just asking because in Zoom, you can live stream it to YouTube or Facebook. Is that an option? I'm still trying to figure out what's the pro and con between Zoom and Hangout. Um, what I would say is this is um, there is a live stream, stream option in Google Hangouts Meet. If you're looking to produce a show, um, Zoom is better. If you already have Google Hangouts, if you already use the G Suite and like, let's say you work at a school or some organization, that's what they have. Um, and you don't have super high demands for what you need from your, your um, meeting software, I think Google Hangouts Meet is the way to go because it's so integrated with everything else in the Googleverse um, and it does a pretty good job. If, if you need like higher resolution, you want to record higher resolution files, um, you want a little more flexibility in where you can live stream to, um, Zoom can live stream to Facebook, um, Google, to, to YouTube, and then there's like custom options apparently. So does that answer your question? Okay, sweet. Um, I have a related question. Yeah. Um, so on the live stream thing, would I then, we have our own channel on YouTube for our organization. Yep. Would I, is it pretty easy to figure out how to hook that up to our channel? Um, are you, would you be doing this from Zoom or Google Hangouts Meet? I'm talking about either, but right now talking about Google Hangouts Meet. Okay, um, let's see here. If I look at the live stream option, Do, do, do. Um, I, as far as I know, it just gives you a link. I suspect it's easy oh. to connect to your channel, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay, um, great. Thanks. But you do need to, uh, it, it's something that your administrator does need to like set up as um, it needs to like, in fact, here I'll show you. It looks like it just gives you a link. I don't actually see that it connects to YouTube. So let me show you an example of what that link looks like. So it's just, it looks like it's just stream.meet.google.com. So I don't even see it connected to YouTube. Um, so that's one of the weird things about Google Hangouts Meet too is, um, if you are presenting from a handheld device like an iPad, you can actually present from an iPad um, using Google Hangouts Meet, which is handy sometimes, but you can't do it from an Android device for some weird reason right now. Zoom can do either. So I, I'm sure it's things they're gonna fix, but Google can be sluggish sometimes. So anyway, does that help? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Cat meow, am I missing anything? You are muted. I am checking right now to see. We did how to present the screen, how to share audio and video, creating a meeting and participants. Um, did we talk about how folks would 
be selecting what best fits their needs, like how much it is and- Oh yeah, yeah, good point. Um, so again, um, if you, I think if you're, if you are somebody that already has this software, um, I think that Google Hangouts Meet is a good option. If you're not trying to produce a show, I think it's very user friendly and good. To, I think it's six bucks a month per user versus Zoom, which is a minimum 15 bucks. So um, I think if, if you want something that's more robust, you should move to Zoom, but Zoom each account costs 15 bucks a piece. So it's not, like what we're doing right now is we have one education account that we're sharing between five people. Google is like, well, it's just rolled into everything else. So if you already have a ton of users using G Suite, everybody can be doing this. So that, that's what I would say is those are big difference. And yes, Lou, that's right. It's free for nonprofits. So um, that's super handy too. The other thing is, is multiple people in your organization can have different Google Hangouts and Google Meetings happening at one time. Whereas with a Zoom account, only one meeting can be happening at a yep. time. Yeah, which is something we've come up against. I'm gonna lower my desk here. Um, so somebody asked something about data privacy. I don't know the, the ins and outs of data privacy. What I do know best is about like people not bombing your meeting. Google is not password protected at this point. It's just link protected. So only the people that have the link can access it. Um, Zoom, Zoom, I think is sort of like how Microsoft is versus Apple. Apple has less viruses because pe less people use that operating system. And I think Google's kind of that way too right now. Since Zoom is the biggest dog in town teleconference wise, it is what gets bombarded more. It's sort of like a random credit card generator. People can like jump into meetings based off of random links. So the way to get around that, and I'm gonna steal some of your thunder, <laughs> Cat Meow, the way to get around that is to password protect your meeting, which Cat Meow is going to show you when we dig a little bit into the um, the back end settings of uh, Zoom. If that answers questions. Yes. Okay, splendid. Well, I turned that into a yes, but it was just written yes. <laughs> okay, any more questions about Google Hangouts Meet or Google Hangouts before we move forward? Because what we're going to do now, I'm going to plop, I'm going to plop this into the chat. This is the link for the Zoom meeting. Oh, but not yet. Okay. Because we ran into this fun thing where Zoom doesn't show the presenting screen, right? That's right. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to nobody jump into that yet. That's the other thing. I forgot about this. Zoom does not show its own interface when you present the screen, which is a pain in the butt if you're trying to teach people how to use it. So Cat Meow is correct. What we're gonna do is open, she's gonna jump into our Zoom meeting. Um, well, okay, actually, <laughs> first, um, <laughs> Seth's gonna let me present via Google, which is where we're at right now. I'm gonna show you how to set up a meeting and invite yeah. folks and do your admin stuff in the background. And then after that, we'll go into the meeting and I can, well, no, after that, I'll show you the interface still through Google meetings. And then we'll go into the actual Zoom meeting and play inside of Zoom together. But for now, I'm gonna use um, the Google Meets to show you, uh-oh, my mic cut off. I'm hearing you. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna show you first the admin side. Then I'm gonna show you my presenter view as an admin of the Zoom meeting, and then we're gonna go into a Zoom meeting. Does that make sense? Cool. That's good. Okay. So I'm gonna. Um, I'm going to my bottom right hand corner in my Google Meets, and I'm stealing the show. I'm gonna present now. So I, it's asking me, do I want to present my entire screen and little, a little pop-up menu um, under this tab present? And I'm going to say, you know what? I don't want to present my entire screen, so I'm going to choose a window. And then when I click on that, I can see every single window. Wow, I have a lot of windows open. 
I can see every single window and choose which one I want to present. So I'm going to look for my profile and share this. And so now, folks, you, you should be able to see um, my profile. Can everyone see that? And is it big enough? So I can make it bigger. How's that look? Yeah? All right. So I'm going to go up to the top. This is um, my KBU one. And I'm going to show you how to set up a meeting. You're going to log in first. You're going to go to meetings. It's taking a second to, uh, you know, figure itself out here. And you can hear my birds freaking out. So it's just loading forever. I guess I'll narrate what the birds are saying. They're saying we can communicate over long distances without internet. That's what the birds are saying. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's unresponsive. That's fun. Let's try this again. Okay, it doesn't like me doing that. So um, you might notice at the top that it says that to enhance the security of pro accounts that since the fifth um, waiting rooms are turned on by default. Um, so that's important and we'll talk about that a little bit. I'm just, maybe I'll go to my settings and show you that instead since the other thing was being finicky. So settings are, are super cool. It's a really great idea to set these first um, so that all of your meetings, you don't have to go in and fiddle with this stuff after the fact, but you can go in and fiddle with it after the fact per each meeting. Um, but I'm gonna show you some of the meeting settings that I like to set on. Um, for sure, accepting, if you see I'm circling right here, the um, audio type, telephone and computer, that way anyone calling in um, will be able to hear and utilize this. Um, I typically start with participants, I'm com coming across the screen here with participants videos on. And the reason I do that is because I found that the more Zoom meetings I hold, um, that if I start with participants videos on, they're more likely to keep their video on. And it's really nice to be able to see people during these times when we're kind of self isolating and things like that. Um, gives you kind of more of a sense of community, especially if it's a small meeting where you all know each other. It's really nice to see each other's faces. Um, and I also start with my video on because if I start with my video on, folks are likely to keep their videos on. So that's really nice. Um, and then you can also allow participants to join before you arrive. So that's fun if folks already know each other because they can sit and chit chat before you come into the Zoom meeting. So I usually leave that toggled on as well. Um, so you can also use a personal meeting ID um, and do, 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 require a password. So as you can see, that's on and only authenticated um, users can join. That's going to make it so that you can see who who the person is as they're joining. And then I have definitely started using a password. Um, if it's a small thing and it's internal meeting, you don't typically need one, but if it's like a meeting that's open to the public, you would wanna initiate a password and once participants register for the meeting, send the password to those participants so that they can get in. And this is something that um, is helpful in stopping people from Zoom bombing. Um, you can also change, um, when you schedule a meeting, I'll show you how to change or generate your meeting ID so you're not using the same meeting ID over and over. That's another tip. Um, and then I'll show you later how to lock your meeting so once everyone's there so that um, so that no other people just jump in, um, higgledy piggledy. All right, all right, do, 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 do. So this is pretty good, feedback. There's a bunch of stuff. You can just uh, decide um, who's going to share their screen or not. So that's great if you're presenting something and you don't need folks' feedback. Um, you can turn that on and off here. Um, there's all kinds of other stuff. And this is a paid um, a paid version. So the unpaid version doesn't have all these things. Um, there's a whiteboard that's kind of fun to use if you're collaborating on a project. Um, it Once you save the whiteboard drawing, everyone can participate in drawing on it. And once you save it, then um, it'll send you the J JPEG, basically, of what the finalized project is. So that's kind of fun for brainstorming. Um, and there's all kinds of other things. Um, you can allow a breakout room, which we're gonna play with later. That's great for having um, discussions apart from the main group and then having everyone come back. And you can turn on your closed captioning here for folks who need that. You can also save your captions. 
all kinds of things. You can turn your virtual backgrounds on and off. Um, and then I typically do put on a waiting room because that way people can hang out before the meeting starts and um, say like for board meetings that we have, uh, the board will start the meeting first. We'll figure out who's going to do the chat window, who's going to be answering questions and things like that. We'll figure out who's doing time stacking um, questions and and other kinds of uh, formalities before we get the meeting started. And so we'll, we'll have our stuff together and be professional as we present the meeting. And then you can invite people in um, who are in the waiting room. And that's also another option um, for keeping it to folks that you know or having folks identify themselves before they join the meeting. Okay, um, boop -a -doop, -a doop There's just a bunch of other settings in here. There's all kinds of things. I'm scrolling up really fast because I want to show you one more important thing in this meeting settings um, setup, and that is recording and telephone options that are important. So in the recording section, um, you can set here if you want um, to give permission to the host to record locally to their own computer. Um, that if you select the other option, it's recording to the cloud. And um, the recording that you get is pretty pretty big, it's gonna have your audio file, it's gonna have your audio and video file as one, and then it's gonna have your chat window as well, and it all comes bundled in one folder. Um, so it's, you need space on your computer to save that, and so that's why oftentimes for longer meetings will um, upload directly to the cloud. Um, so all your cloud settings are here. And then the other important thing to set is the telephone settings. So um, I always make sure that I go down to the participant list and I make sure to toggle it on here. Um, it's going to mask that phone number. It, we've had um, issues in the past at different Zoom meetings I've been on where those phone numbers aren't masked. And that means anyone in the meeting who's participating can see the number of the person who's on the phone. So we want to avoid that and keep give people their privacy. So you would want to make sure that it's toggled on. That's It comes um, as a default not toggled on. So I would go in there and switch that up. So once you have your settings all done, let's try to see if we can do set a meeting here. Oh, all right. So I just clicked on the left-hand column on the meetings bar in blue. And um, when I click on that, you can see what comes up is I can schedule a new meeting. I can look at all my upcoming meetings. I can look at previous meetings that we've held. Um, I can go into personal meeting room. But I want to go back to upcoming meetings. Oh, snap. That's fun. Let's go to schedule a meeting. I'm going to show you how to do that. So to schedule a meeting, you're going to pick a topic. Cat meow is awesome. Yeah. Um, the description is, we all know this. Yes, we all know this to be true. And I can spell, I went to college, I promise. Okay, and then you're gonna set your date. I like using the little calendar because I'm a visual person. So right next to your date box on the right-hand side, there's a little tiny, tiny icon that when you click on it, opens up this calendar. You can toggle far into the future to my birthday. So I'm gonna put that in, yeah. And I like starting my birthday things at eight o'clock. So I'm gonna scroll down to eight. There's the PM next to that. And the duration, you know, one hour, that's plenty of time to party, right? You can set this as a reoccurring meeting. A lot of times there's staff meetings that happen regularly, and that's great. Or um, instructors will have um, seminar at a certain time, certain date. Um, you can have a registration requirement if you click on that. Um, so people will have to register to attend. And that's another um, way to keep randos from joining your meetings. Um, and then I would recommend putting a uh, generate automatically um, the meeting ID. You don't actually want to share your personal meeting ID typically. And then I would also um, encourage folks to use that password. That really helps out um, having that password. So you can, again, you can switch your settings in here that you have set to your default. So you'll notice that I had set those to on and on and it saved it for all my meetings going forward. So they are all that way now. If I went in here and I switched this to off, it would only be switching it to this meeting specifically. So that's nice. Um, and then you can see your other meeting options here below. And you can also invite other folks to host. So say I wanted Seth to host this meeting as well because I needed to like blow out my birthday candle 
you know, candles on the cake, then I would just say, you know, Seth it uh, and Metro East it. I don't know if that's your actual email offhand. And then you would hit save and that would save this meeting. Um, but I don't want to save this because um, folks at KBU would be like, why are you having your birthday party on our Zoom channel? And I would be like, I'm not. Um, so let me go ahead and go back into meetings. I went to the left-hand side, clicked on my meetings, and I'm going to look at my upcoming meetings. And I'm just going to show you what it looks like once you do set your meeting. So we'll click on this board meeting. Um, and you can see that under my meetings, it says it's my board meeting. That's what I'm managing. This is going to be the April one. And please feel free to come on by uh, April 27th. Um, you can add this to your Google Calendar here in the time section. So underneath description, there's time. You can also set it to Outlook if you're using Outlook or your Yahoo Calendar. It gives you your meeting ID that was generated. Um, the password wasn't saved on this. The board meeting is open to the public, so we don't set a password um, so that folks don't have difficulty getting in to the board meeting. And we just have someone who's doing um, a check to, if there are any people like rabble rousing, there are options to kick people out um, if, or send them to the waiting room. Um, so then um, to copy your invitation. You can see right here under meeting password invite attendees. You can either just copy this and paste it wherever, or there's a button to the right on the same line that says copy the invitation. When I copy that, it's gonna bring up my copy the invitation meeting screen and I'll click on copy, or you can just do that number and select it all. Um, so if you copy that, it gets copied to your clipboard as you can see there. And then you can paste it wherever you need to paste it in your Google Calendar or in an email or what have you. Um, you can also delete any meeting you create at the very bottom here and you can review your options, but you can't change them here. You'd have to go back into your um, meeting settings to change that. Okay, recording. Oh, yeah. I would just like to add is um, for setting up um, meetings you can also there's a plugin in chrome for google calendar that you can just create a meeting it's super handy and quick um so i, re I highly recommend the there's actually in that window that you had there's like a download the chrome extension that's super great if you're creating um if you're creating meetings with oh. um google calendar yeah you can see it here and there's also an out an outlook outlook plugin as well so that, those are great. Thank you, Seth. Um, so then we also have recordings is another main section you want to take a look at. Once your meeting's done, if you've chosen to record it to the cloud, it, it will show up here. If you've chosen to record it locally, it will show up here too. But when you click on it, it won't show, it won't show you the actual recording. So boop, boop, boop. So here's the cloud recordings here and then local recordings. You can see I have a one local recording, which I'm never doing again because it took way too much space up on my computer. Um, but that's where you would um, go and look for your recordings once they are done. And hooray and yay. So now I'm going to um, stop sharing for just a sec um, and log into Zoom meeting that we're all going to go to in a second. Hey, Cat Meow. Um, yes. Can you guys resend the link? Because this is an FYI to everybody else that I've run into. Since I have Comcast, my internet connection kind of pooped out on me a couple times. Go figure. Um, if that happens to anybody and you log back in, all the comments that you have written or I, I've seen get erased. So your comments only generate from the time you log in. So could you resend that Zoom link as well? It's there. Awesome, thank you. So we're jumping into Zoom? Um, I'm gonna show the interface first okay, so that cool. folks can see it. Gotcha. So don't go it's into Zoom yet. Don't go yet. Don't leave, is don't the, leave. Um, is, there's a question, is the cloud the recordings that go to part of the Zoom account or do you save it to your own cloud storage? Mm. Oh, that's a good question. I believe it goes to whoever set up the administrator whoever it's set up through. So like OpenSignal would have, their Zoom account would go to their storage. Uh, Metro East would go to theirs, KBU would go to theirs. But I don't think there's any kind of like limit on storage. No. To my knowledge. No, not for the Zoom recordings. 
All right, let's see here. Oh. Will you start the meeting, um, Seth, for me? Sure, yep. And let me get it cracking. It is started. Um, are you able to jump in? Let me try again. Do, 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 everybody. Thanks for your patience. Do, 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 do. All right, let's try one more time. Open. Yeah, it's saying no. Okay. Maybe I have, maybe I have a different link. Is it the uh, one from? It should be the one from today. Give me a second, and I'll um I'll send the link. Um, okay. There's a when you're in the meeting. There's the copy the copy um or invite people, but I'm not seeing it. Join um, Zoom meeting. Invite. Okay. Um, copy URL. Got it. I'll do. Let's copy URL. Boom. That's that appears to be the correct one. Maybe I didn't dump in the correct. Try that. I will try that. Nobody else try it. Not yet. Um, and if you want to join in that meeting, so I can show people what it looks like with a participant. I is there. Great. Okay. Cool. You're there. All right. Great. Fabulous. And then so, I'm gonna go. Saren is in there right now. Saren, could I get you to leave the 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 Google Hangouts me? Well, actually it's not hurting anything. Just keep rocking. Yeah. Just keep rocking. It's, it's cool, you. It's cool, yo. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again. Um, again, I'm in Google Hangouts sharing my Zoom screen um, by going to the lower right hand corner and clicking on that present now. I'm gonna choose a window. I'm gonna choose, whoa, I think this one. Ooh, it's not showing me. Just a second here. Cancel. Uh, boop. Okay, let me try this again. Do, 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 do. Present now. Window. All right. And I'm going to hand over host ship to you. Excellent. So I'm going to make that big so everyone can see. You should see Metro East on the middle of the screen. Looks like no audio and Zoom. That's correct. That's because it was set so that everyone who joins, can you see the, the pop-ups that I'm seeing, folks? Um, yeah. So right now, I can't. Great, all right. So right now I can't see everyone, so I, I'm gonna come down. Usually as a host, you would unmute, but if I am muted right now, I would have feedback. Um, so I guess I'll start on the left-hand side and move over. So that's my, my audio. I can unmute myself and the presenter in Zoom can unmute and mute folks too. Um, next to my audio, there's different um, selections that you can make to um, change that up, like what speakers you, or what microphone you're using, um, and different options there um, in the drop up carrot, pop up carrot. And then you'll see a video, um, little like video camera icon. And if you click on that, um, you can change your video settings. Um, and you can also, with some folks, um, they're able to click on something that's virtual backgrounds. It's really fun to play with. You can upload different backgrounds. It's something that you can set in the administrative side of things. Um, we kind of looked at that when we were looking at settings um, and that will block what's behind the person and show a virtual background. And so people will be able to mess with that too. And to get this to, um, little pop up to disappear, I'm just going to click on that little carrot again. I'm moving to the right to the middle of the screen. You, you'll see a big bar. Oh, there's Seth with the virtual background. Isn't that nice? Wrong screen. <laughs> so here you see that there's a little guy that says invite this allows you to you can't see my cursor folks having trouble seeing the cursor it could be on my end my internet's really taking a dump right now sorry okay it's all good that's the technical so, term um, that is a very technical term so write that down in your vocabulary notebooks um, we will be checking those at the end of the class so you can click on invite 
um, and, and invite people in, in real time. And that's great in case, um, and I've got that cursor as big as I can get it. I'm so sorry, folks. Um, that's in case you forgot someone or someone loses their link and they're trying to get a hold of you. Thanks, Stan. Um, you can go ahead and live in real live time, use your default email, your Gmail, your Yahoo mail, or you can just copy the invitation or the URL and send those just like that. So that's fun. And then it also, if you saw, there's a password. So it shows you everything you need to know. Um, and then I don't need that right now. I'm gonna go to manage participants. So you can see that there's three people logged in right here. There's a little tiny three at the bottom of the um, corner or the bottom of the screen here. And there's two people stacked on top of each other icon. When I click on that, I can see everyone who's in this call right now. I can mute or unmute people. Um, I can rename myself. Um, if you click on more, we'll see next to Seth, I can um, ask to start a video. I can make Seth the host. I can make Seth the co-host. I can allow him to record. I can rename him and call him Metro East guy. Um, or I could put him on hold or remove him if he's giving me trouble. I can also um, switch people's cameras on and off here. I can give a yay. I can give, you can see next to my name, there's a little check mark. So you can have people vote in the chat window. I can say no. Um, I can ask someone to please go a little slower, um, which is really helpful, or go faster, but not at the same time. That's great. Um, and there are also uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, clapping, uh, coffee, and I need to take a break, which is nice if someone's in a role and they're presenting and you don't want to interrupt them, you can let the, um, the host know by just clicking on those things. And you can also clear everything. You can mute everybody at one time here at the bottom if you click on that little mute all. Um, and you can also unmute everyone and more. So this is um, the more section, it's where the lock meeting is hiding. And the lock meeting is another one of those privacy things that's really helpful. So if I were to click lock meeting right now, then no one else would be able to join the meeting. But I'm not gonna do that because we're gonna invite you in here in a second. Okay, so that is the participants, managing participants. There's also a polling option, which is really fun down here in the middle of the bar. Again, this is your toolbar in the very middle. So when I click on that, um, you can see, uh, that we have a poll for everyone to take once you join us. It's going to be, do you like dog or cat? And um, as, an, as an administrator, I would launch the poll. After I launch it, by clicking on launch poll, um, we would see whether or not um, Seth and Saring uh, like dogs or cats. And it's in real time, so it's fun to see that moving. And we are using full screen. Maybe if I make it not full screen, that'll be helpful and just make it a little bigger. Is that more visible folks? You see down here. Um, so you also have the ability to screen share in Zoom and that's this little same similar box with an arrow. Um, you're gonna click the carrot next to it and you can have one participant sharing or multiple participants sharing, and then there's advanced sharing options as well here. Um, you can also open your chat window by clicking on the chat bubble. And a fun thing about Zoom is you can communicate to everyone or just specific people. So I'm gonna send a private note, hey there, just to one person, you can see up here, it says privately, so no one else can see that in the Zoom call but the administrator. But the thing to note about this that we found out um, the hard way is that when you do upload to the cloud your um, your Zoom conferences or meetings or you, um, or you save it locally, either way, uh, the chat window that gets saved actually does record all private conversations. So just make your um, participants aware that it, even if they, they're speaking to each other and no one else in the group can see it, that whoever the admin is will be able to read their conversation later on. Um, we had an issue with people sharing emails and um, phone numbers and then that being recorded um, as public document. And so that's an important thing to note in here. Um, and you can switch that back to everyone. There's also a more drop down here. So you can um, take off comments if people are being naughty or if it's not applicable to you. You can also only allow the host to comment and you can merge your meeting to another window as well here. 
doot. And then um, your record button is right next to that chat button. So here, if you've, if you've decided to record to the cloud, but you changed your mind, you can change it here. So there's still time to, to make decisions about recording, whichever one you click on here. Once you click on that, it's going to let's say, I want to record to the cloud. It's going to look like that. So there's a little red dot in a cloud and it says it's recording and you can stop up here um, on the little pause button or the stop if you wanna fully stop. Or you can also select those down here at the bottom on your toolbar. So I'm gonna stop that recording. And it asks you if you want the cloud to stop recording and I'm gonna say yes. So the other thing that we're gonna show you in, um, when we actually get into Zoom is the breakout rooms. It looks like um, I have two participants so I could technically have two rooms and I can either automatically send them to breakout rooms or manually choose where they want to go. So I'm going to go ahead and create a breakout room by clicking on create a breakout room. I can name the breakout rooms, but for now I'm not and I can delete them. And then to put people in the breakout rooms so they can like discuss important policies um, separately, I can assign folks to those rooms. So I'm going to assign Seth to the breakout room one and I'm going to assign um, to Sering to the breakout room two. And then what happens is you can um, tell everyone, hey, I'm going to send you all the breakout rooms, talk about this, such and such. And then I'm going to open the rooms. So when I open the rooms, um, Seth and Tessarin can join those rooms. They're getting a message on their screen to, to join the rooms. So it looks like I can see by the green dot that Tessarin already joined this room. And Seth's taking a minute. So what I'm going to do is, since um, Tessarin was first, I'm going to join them in their room. So I'm going to click on join. It's going to ask you, are you sure you want to go in there? And I'm like, yeah. I want to ch check in and see. So it takes a second. And I'll bring the other, can you see that room that we're in? I, think I can see it maybe, Did you stop screen sharing? No, but let me, it might've just did it. I'll present now. So when I did that, it stopped screen sharing for me. So we'll screen share now. So you should be able to see Tessering and I in a room hanging out. So we're in a chat room. I can ask questions. I can um, message just this group and the other groups won't see. It's kind of neat. And then I can also leave. So down the lower right hand corner, I'm going to say, hey, that was really fun. Thanks so much for hanging out with me in this breakout room. I'm going to leave. It's going to say, do you want to leave the meeting? And that's the entire meeting. And there's a drop down. Keep meeting running for others and meeting for all or I can return to the main session and that's what I'm going to do. Bye. Thanks. That was great. And now it unshared my screen again. Um, boop, 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 boop. So I'm going to present now again. And now you're seeing my zoom screen, my presenter mode. And as you can see, it says end meeting here on the bottom. And what I'm seeing as a presenter is myself because I'm the only one in this Zoom meeting. Everyone else is in breakout rooms. So I can go to breakout rooms and I can um, click on breakout rooms in the lower bottom um, panel and I can say, hey, everyone, I am closing the meetings or breakout room. I'm closing breakout rooms in one minute you know, have them wrap up their thoughts or whenever you can say something much nicer. And then I'm going to hit broadcast. It's going to send that to both rooms at the same time. And then when I select close all rooms, it's going to give you a 59 second countdown for those folks to get out. And they can now choose to end to, to rejoin the main meeting. So Seth just left and he rejoined and you can see, i make this a little bit bigger folks. You can see that there's Seth there. And Tessering joined as well. So we're right back to where we started. We're all back together. And so um, the other thing next to breakout rooms is a little not hamburger. What's this one called? Ellipsis. So this is where you can um, stream live. You can live to YouTube, to um, Workplace by Facebook. I'm not sure what that is. I haven't used that yet. And live on Facebook. 
So that's the fun little click on that sucker and you'll start streaming live. I'm not going to do that because I, I don't want to do that right now. Um, but that is where you would find that under more, which it's not very descriptive. So maybe write that sucker down. Um, so I'm not going to end the meeting, but this is what I would click on to end the meeting for everyone on the lower right hand corner in red. I'm going to that's because I want to go up and show you what the presenter sees because we won't be able to see this once we're actually in Zoom together. So at the top, you can see it says gallery view and it's it's a little um, backwards. So I'm not seeing the gallery view now. If I click on gallery view, this is the gallery view. You'll see everybody on the call um, tiled. And that's really great for screenshots of the meeting that you have. Yay, hi. Um, and then if you wanna go back to speaker view, you'll click on the top right on speaker view, and then it goes back to showing you whoever is talking. And then of course, full screen here in the top right-hand corner. Did I forget anything, Seth? You're muted. We're good.